Welcome back, everyone, to Kaiser Rai Kimura, your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And as you can see, we are the Sinosphere. We are going to become one of the most powerful factions in the entire world. It is August 2nd, 1945. The Moscow Court is not looking so good against the Reich's pack, so we might as well deliver a death blow. Maybe we can get a couple towels, maybe more of the old coast, maybe some uh, Vladivostok, why not. So basically, we're going to go to war with them. As we're slowly trying to train our navy, so that's the way we can launch a naval invasion into Japan. Because that's really my goal, the end goal. Yeah, you know, get take out, uh, take back really Macau, maybe Southeast Asia, maybe India. Don't really have any ambitions in Europe, Africa, or even the Americas. But you know, we'll see what happens. Ooh, there are ice packs over here too. Huh? Ah, Danube, uh, the Austrians. Austrians really want to take back Mexico. But that being said, are are our soldiers really prepared prepared to go? No. Uh, that being said, they're out of manpower. And you know what? Actually, just like the German Empire. Uh, Ukrainians have quite a bit of map, but then it's uh, scraping the barrel. So we're going to go in. We're going to see what we can do. We encounter some enemy divisions immediately. But as you can see from the tiles, a lot of the divisions, uh, they're not guarding their, their, you know, their fortifications and whatnot. They're not guarding their provinces. And I've converted a lot of the cavalry pretty much all to like motorized. So we're completely out of motorized and trucks and we have no fuel. But you know what else? What ex do you expect? You know? Oh, you want to help us out? Sure. Yeah, we need more fuel. Um, Iran? Uh, that's too many factories for us to give. Here, do that. We're trying to train. Um, our industry is looking all right. It's not fantastic. We're trying to build up some more... What are we building up here? It's been a couple days since this episode and the last one, so... We're going to build up more refineries, too. The fall of Vladivostok is very, very good. So we'll take as many things as we possibly can. Um, yeah, we're really out of trucks. We're really, really out of trucks. Only 19,000, that's all. 1,100 things of, uh, you know, anti-tank. You know, it is what it is. Well, do we have a nice, do have a nice cup of tea here to keep us nice and you know, warm and satisfied? Because if we're not satisfied, what's the point of doing this? We must be satisfied. So we're building up a sub fleet too. Um, you guys are guarding all the coasts and whatnot, all over the place, which is fine. This will be our main army because I want to just move, 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 move. Even though we are on a superior firepower doctrine, but it is all right. Whatever, you know. Naval Hawk Command. We actually got to figure out focus, putting as many subs as possible. So we're going to go sub interdiction, or train interdiction. So the subs can get the most benefit out of them all. Can just go across there if you possibly can. That'd be fantastic. What's next? Uh, trucks? Of course we need more rubber for trucks itself. Uh, we're missing only aluminum. Oil processing is awesome. Uh, we need more of that, we need more of that too. We need rubber, we need fuel, you know, all that good stuff. Lots of subs. Lots and lots and lots of subs. So you're all expected to go as fast as possible. Even the supply lines are going to be god-awful. And we honestly really can't take that much, you know. Gosh, Kent. Let's take a look-see. So they've lost 12.5 million. Wow. It's kind of insane. They've lost quite a few. The German Empire's only lost a little bit more than a quarter of the Russian as well. Roughly. Roughly, of course. Uh, put them back over here, grab some more rubber. That'd be nice. Rubber is mm, three is not great. It's not terrible though. Um, let's grab another refinery here. We still need to build up our infrastructure. And uh build some nuclear bombs eventually too, shall we? Liberation of Asia. I guess we did prepare our liberation war against the Russian state. We do that against Afghanistan too. Uh, China's unique position in Asia due to centuries of long standing dominance, culturally and politically in the region. It is China who considered who is considered one of the world's greatest and oldest civilizations, and it's only fitting that the Chinese nation, now revived, should be capable of carrying out the world revolution. By utilizing China's vast industrial and military prowess, we'll be, we'll be, we will seek to dismantle the reaction regimes and liberate our fellow Asian comrades so that they too may achieve salvation at last, too. Ah, we'll give that one up. we got the for it. So we got a lot of stuff we can do here, too, huh? We'll get there eventually. Heroism. Uh, we're going to be destroying what we have here eventually. Yeah, that's not bad, only that yet. Here's the Indian section. Prospect resources? Actually, that'd be pretty nice. Uh, extract natural gas in Dajian. Dajian sits upon the largest natural gas reserve in China, but a lot remains untapped. We gotta invest in the sector so that the riches don't go to waste. Chongqing sits upon the largest natural gas reserve in China, but a lot of it remains untapped. Uh, we gotta invest in the sector so that riches don't go to waste. And so does Chengdu. Examine foreign designs. If you don't know about that one, please go to head. There's Lebanon. Uh, Sudan. Guided missiles. Youth of a new revolutionary age. Um, unnecessary bureaucracy towards the ideas of true freedom. We'll gain military factories in one, two, three, four, five different states. We'll gain above two factories 
bidding on the combined influence over Toto's popularity. That's quite a bit. I like that. What is freedom? Freedom is the ability for the people of this Greek country to relinquish their liberties, rights, and even potentially their lives so that the nation might be free. It is indeed a heavenly principle for an individual to serve and sacrifice for the nation, a sacrificial duty of unqualified submission. When that is achieved for everyone in the nation, we can then consider our society drawn closer to the ideas of true freedom. Yeah. Land reform, of course, as well. There have been many thinkers and theorists who have opposed potential solutions to the decades-long issues festering in the Chinese countryside. I have successfully united the nation under one banner. We have the sufficient resources and stability to implement our comprehensive plan to solve these problems. All that is needed now is the political will to carry out such an effort on a large scale. So that's pretty much in every province here. What we'll do eventually to restore our stability, but you know what? This is what we need political power for. But we're also over here to evacuate military industry hinterlands. For nearly a decade, the Chinese KMT has driven into exile following near destruction of the hands of the Zili and their German allies. After the collapse of the Northern Expedition, yet despite the expedition's failure, the dream of a united China under the banner of the blue sky and white sun never died away. And the revolutionaries from Fujian to Hawaii continued to carry the hope that one day the National Revolution continued to carry the hope, or it could be resurrected. Despite the failed uprising in 1932, continued to carry the last the hope that one day the National Revolution could be resurrected. Uh, KMT revolutionaries and guerrillas. Uh, decided to take advantage of the political turmoil following the, an all-out insurgency with the goal of liberating the eastern seaboard of China. Should the National Revolution Army be successful, this may be very be the last chance for the KMT to realize the vision of the uh, late Dr. Sen. I mean, we could, but we really don't need that. And we'll see uh, things eventually. Um, renovate the Shanghai Arsenal. Our time in Britain and France has the importance of armored and mechanized warfare. While it will be a long while before we're able to develop sophisticated armored technology like the West, the Shanghai Arsenal will be renovated to facilitate the production of armored cars similar to the ones used by the Shanghai Volunteer Corps. Found in the Central Machine Factory. Hunan remains one of the most agrarian and rural provinces in all of southern China. The National government hopes to rectify this by establishing the Central Machinery Factory with the help of the Ministry of Interior. This factory helps produce the machinery and gadgets of the modern world, such as automobiles, steam turbines, and telephones. That'd be great. That'd be absolutely fan flippin' tastic. Anything else here we need immediately for torpedoes, maybe? This doesn't really help us there. Here to this one. What do we got here? Chinese armor? Uh, sure, you can be more reliable. Why not? Yeah. Oh, legation cores are now our cores. Fantastic. Um, this stuff is all important, don't get me wrong. But what else do we got here? It's 1945. There we go. What else can we do here? What else are we missing? Anti-tank, anti-air. Throw on the anti-air, only costs us steel. Basic medium tanks are alright. Get those on there towards the idea of true freedom. Absolutely. There you go, artillery designer. Boom. And this was the one I really wanted us to do. The Red General Lisa was not bad. We're going to destroy her stability. And this is if you want to go totalist. Hurt, low, hurts our uh, daily compliance gear, but gets better resistance target. But now it's regeneration. Get more attack, lose 25% stability, more war support, 100% more war support. Uh, a point he is on not Han. So base stability is none. Actually, this would be good if once we get take a lot of stability hits. I replace the legitimacy of the party, national government, with the legitimacy of the party, total abnegation of the individual. More organization, way better, or, well, well, just better organization, or better recruitable population factor. You get way worse daily compliance gain. But better weekly war support casualties, which is not bad. I want to save that for later. But if you want to read about harmless economy, please go ahead. I've read that before. It hurts our consumer goods factors, but and resources, but could be worse. So we got these going, these going. Uh, do we have that float floating harbor? Yes, we do. That's good. Actually, before we do that, are there upgrades for this? Two, four. No. There what upgrades did you even put on here? I have no idea. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Just crud tons of subs. Um, sub is Zhang Tan Steelworks. Zhang Tong is important due to its modern industry and its convenience of land and water transportation. With heavy coal and iron industries constrained to the Far East, Northeast of the Research Committee of the National Government seeks to build a steelworks in Hunan with the help of French advisors. It's fine. Alright, so where are the supply lines all through here? Because I know they're going to be god awful. You don't really need to have that one. That would be bad. There you go. Because there's one kind of sneaking all the way through here and whatnot. That'd be good to sneak here too. 
Central American Republic is nice. Um, that would be nice too. Because then they're all connected up through here as well. The concept of productivity, there you go. Lots of roads, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of roads. Uh, sure, why not? What are we at now? We're at 1%. Plus 25,000. Not ideal. Uh, green gold mine? I think I read this one earlier, but we'll read it again. Or before. Rubber is the key to the supply and field of any modern army, and luckily Hainan is a treasure trove of natural rubber. The warm tropical climate of the island makes rubber production flourish. In fact, locals refer to the rubber as green gold. The resource committee aims to transform Hainan into China's rubber plantation, one that will surely aid in the domestic production and control of foreign trade. Our modern economy would be great. We'll claim the permanent purge, which makes sense for us to do. This one makes sense if we would do maybe more national populace, perhaps. Um... But we're going to go with Proclaim the Permanent Purge. Violence is a purifying force must be used even against those persons and the part of the government who do not measure up to the revolutionary standard. Should we continue to use tolerant methods, we can never exterminate corruption. We must create a mass violence organization, one that will use violence to directly attack the group of corrupt bureaucrats and other traits. To train the intellectual back, 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 backward people to, look out, to hate the corrupt bureaucrats to exploit them. Absolutely. So detection, agility, naval targeting. Yeah, target them harder. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. More fuel, please. And more rubber. Because right now, we're looking pretty good on a lot of stuff here. We don't need nearly as much now. And we're going to actually send to you for more of this. That would be great. Fuel's looking pretty decent overall. Still only did 1%, but that's okay. Um, what else we got here? Tanks, medium tank. Eh, it's alright. We'll get there eventually. Um, so after that, uh, no, never another humiliation. The role. This is the role of survival. Great powers seek to only the ability for them to flex their muscles and extend their menzu across the globe. As such, China must emulate this model if she is to survive. For we have seen the, what the foreign imperials have done to the country, and we know that the greed will bring us to our country again. Uh, bring us to our country again. To divide and separate a great nation, humiliate our race. Let us increase funding for military and navy to back our threats with strength. Yeah. Entrenching. Isolation. Well, I don't think that's really the one we want to do. If you don't know about this one, please go right ahead. Xenophobic isolation, huh? Fanatic mi mil uh, militarism would be the probably the best one. The individual is merely cog in the great wheel of the national struggle. The Chinese men and women must aspire to become a new individual. That is a new individual who will subordinate his personal well and wealth to the dedication of the military. Death and battle should be seen, seen as heroic martyrdom. We should encourage all citizens of our country to prepare for the offer their lives to the national, nation's national defense. Refer to a Wazu Vegetable Oil Company. Tongue oil, or China wood oil, is a drying oil obtained by pressing the seed from a nut on the tongue tree. A serious use has been recorded in the writings of Confucius dating back to 400 BCE. It is most importantly used for finishing and protecting wood, which can be used to strengthen China's domestic industries. Um, as a result, the national government has set aside land in Guangxi to process tongue oil in the Wuzhu uh, to perfect. Due to his and Wu's how is perfect due to the geographical location, already established natural industrial foundation. The Ma Hansen Affair. With gusto, investigators appointed from the ranks of He Zong Nan's Zi Hong Han's Oraka have found out across the country, scouring the nation for impurity whenever we can find it. For many young officers, muckracking the thoroughly corrupt Chinese bureaucracy is their chance at a career making breakthrough. Perhaps why we, they became too bold in underestimating just how entrenched post revolutionary interests they already are, and they recently received North. General ha Ma Han San carved out his domain as a director of the North China region for Dai Chung Feng's Juntong. Using extensive connections in his northern background, 90% of Juntong are southerners. He has been counted as the fifth of the Juntong's four great generals of the north, the others being Wang Tian Mu, Liu Yi Zhao, Chao Jai Kai, and Chen Gongshu. Not a Wampo graduate, he an outsider of the Untra Juntong rivals between Mao Ren Fang's Zhejiang branch, Zheng Jimen Guangdong branch, Tang Zong's Hongnan branch, and Wei Da Ming's clique. Consequently, he is happy to maintain his own neutral clique, boasting that. The Juntong agents are three levels above any uh, civilian official. This man has been extorting money from traders and collecting work fees, and blessing these properties, and even selling false Juntong work permits to reactions to help them escape justice. 
That's playing corruption. Uh, another irregularities have made him an easy target for the swarm of commissars unleashed by General Heat. Mao has been publicly arrested, probably thanks to tips uh, from general General's rivals. In case trumpeted by He Zhang Han's allies, and bothered by the successes, He Zhang Han I struck out against his own rival Dai Chong Feng, trying his luck arresting dozens of Xinhai gangsters and other patriotic businessmen protected by the embarrassed Jun Tong. The Lao Ban of the New Republic's premier. Uh, secret police exploded with his legendary temper uh, and demanded the prompt release of those unjustly uh, imprisoned. Uh, he has appealed directly to the Generalissimo Hu, insisting that policing belongs in the juris jurisdiction. The irony, of course, seems to have been lost on him. So be it. Repudiate the catastrophe of 1927. Every chance person in Michelle remember the date 1927 is the year that German imperialists sailed forth and destroyed the national revolution, and still on the imperialist Han Jian Puyi on the throne once more, and sinking our nation into further warlordism. Now that China's strength returned, inner power uncontested, it's true a time for us to repudiate the catastrophe of 1927. Finally, Germany shall know what it's like to lose everything, beyond the Mahon line. The Mahon line was drawn up fairly by the British, forcibly ceding the territory or region of Tawang to the breakaway state of Tibet. It's a national outrage that a decision was made without approval and a humiliation to our ability to intervene in our own national affairs. As Tibet's affairs are China's affairs. Whether their nation strong once more will push forward and restore honor to China's uh, and territorial integrity. Oh, we need to own Taiwan too, so we, to, we really have to kill Japan next if we want to do anything else. Uh, eliminate unnecessary bureaucracy. The greatest effect of the party's bureaucracy is that everyone makes excuses and blames everyone else, thereby dissipating the party's internal strength. No one acts in as soon as a meeting is called and there are disagreements. In recent months, we have seen what factionalism has done and our duty to ensure that the party never again falls to such weakness. To gain inspiration from our Cerulean peers, patronage positions will be good and the disloyal purged. Nice. Youth of a new revolutionary era. Uh, the youth of this country shall be born to a new revolutionary in China. It's our duty to ensure that the revolution continues with them. We will create youth organizations and scouting groups to encourage the youth to work together in groups and encourage physical education in all schools. For youth of China will be the future men and women of the National Revolutionary Army, it's important that we cultivate them in the next vanguard. Yeah, ding dong. Nice. We've actually pushed quite a bit. Of course, I'm gonna be ignoring this quite a bit, and supply really sucks right here, but still. Well, the Catherine broke, which means it sounds like Russia's gonna fall soon, but you never know. We'll see how much we can actually take out of all this, you know. What do we have, like 2%, 3% score? Not very much. Because they still own Moscow. Oh. Oh, is Russia coming back maybe? Or maybe they didn't fall that hard yet. Yeah, we'll see. Good. More fuel for the war machine, yes. Roads are nice. Being also are nice. Nuclear reactors, yes. Sure, we'll take some trucks from you. Why not? Goodbye, Venezuela. And then what? We got other stuff we can do here. Authorized special services, which I think I read before. Uh, I think I might have read this one too, but uh, naval aviation's field that has made great strides over the last few decades. While it might be a premature to believe us capable of such operations given our limited air and sea capabilities, we have an advantage over our more established peers in the lack of entrenched doctrines. Therefore, we must be willing to have flexibility at bringing both our naval and air assets together in deadly, deadly combination. Another the Jingxiang, no, uh, dockyards, one of the more important facilities in the nation are the Jingnan. Uh, dockyards. For us to turn a civilian naval to development to sustain its finances. Now that we successfully recover Shanghai from foreign colonizers, we will turn uh, uh, Zhongnan into the uh, engine of a new grand fleet of the Republic. An influx. Uh, the investment will recruit new staff, create new dry docks, and above all, produce new ships towards a new Republic. With the help of the Ministry of Education, schools in the Republic of China are directed to promote uh, a nationalized educational policy that helps foster an unrequitable love and for and readiness to sacrifice. 
uh, even for the lives of the nation. According to the anonymous writer on behalf of the uh, CRS, the children that we educate are the nation's children. Uh, not children, family, or clan. In the classroom, children are instructed to participate in group activities, uh, group co group cooperations, and group discussions are practice collective thoughts for the students to learn to identify with the nation first rather than the familial loyalties. Uh, military doctrine. Our indoctrination of children is begin as early as kindergarten. Young children would be given guns and warships as toys. Pictures of battle scenes would be placed on the wall so that from childhood children would understand or develop an interest in military equipment and battle situations. From kindergarten on, where children would be educated in a military environment, with middle school students learn enrolling the three principles of the People Youth League, which is a sole youth organization, with strong martial emphasis. Stress is placed on physical training and group competitions in this way. The frail and bookish students of the past would be replaced by the revolutionary vanguard of the future. Formal military education is beginning in secondary school, in which men would partake in military training, while the girls would receive training as nurses. Studies in the humanities would be discouraged, while practical and scientific subjects such as physics, chemistry, and engineering are to be oriented towards wartime applications. For example, classes in chemistry will stress the study of things such as poison gases and explosives. Make fine soldiers one day. They are the revolutionary officers of tomorrow. The Old Gardener, a popular tourist attraction in Baiping, is the city's once closed off, now forbidden palace. The home of the Ming and Manchu emperors are now a public museum dedicated to showcasing the brilliance of Chinese civilization. If one arrives at the museum palace garden early in the afternoon, they might run into a rather scrawny, plain clothes dressed gardener chained to the flowers, who is more than eager to point out and lecture on the palace's treasures as well as do things he did in his youth. Spectators and tourists are beyond astonished when they realize the old garden is none other than the former Zhongtong emperor himself, Pu Yi. Bone was captured by NRA forces during the complete, completing stages of the Second Northern Expedition. Uh, the KMT decided to remodel him into a model citizen in tune with the ideals of the d late Dr. Sun Yat Sen. The former emperor and captured uh, Feng Shan Chinese soldiers, Japanese soldiers, who were sent to a prisoner of war camp during the Second Son of Japanese War. Here, the former emperor was observed as unable to perform even basic tasks such as brushing his teeth and tying his shoes, much to the amusement of his captors. During his re-education, Bu Yi met with those who had suffered due to famine and his economic failure in both the former League of Eight Provinces and Zili Province as a testament to the consequences of his collaborations with, with the Germans. After several long years in re-education, the part of the Central Committee officially voted to suspend Pu Yi's sentence and release him as a productive member of the New China. He has recently gotten remarried to a hospital nurse named Li Xuxian, and with encouragement of the party, hopes to complete his autobiography. These days, he denounces his imperialism, claims he was a coward and betrayed his country by working with the Germans. A very clumsy man who's made his, who had his needs taken care of his whole life, he reportedly now finds much more happiness than, than when he was Emperor of China, and is known by some locals as a rather kind and humble man. As he says himself, yesterday's Puyi is the enemy of today's Puyi. A new Puyi before he knew China. Fantastic. Let's see what happens when he get educated in our China. The Anhui Industrial Plan. Led by the Resource Committee, the Ministry of Industry is part of the Greater National Reconstruction Plan. The construction of the Ma Man Shan Central Steel Mills hopes to develop Man Lui steel and coal production. Despite being plentiful throughout the land, steel remains tremendously low through China, and the larger steel facilities owned by the Japanese and An Shan, or at least was. Creating a nationalized central steel facility there shall reduce imperialistic influence in our economy as well as expanding our steel production to its true potential. Furthermore, we shall have to develop the local infrastructure in the region in order to allow for an efficient way of transporting our coal. There you go. Very nice. Invite foreign naval uh, advisors. We're not alone in the world, and we do not need to reinvent the wheel. Therefore, with the help of our allies in Europe and various independent experts we've hired from foreign fleets, we can enhance our own naval capabilities in a timely manner. Using the designs purchased or borrowed from overseas, we'll get our uh, start in building a modern uh, fleet worthy of our great nation. And embrace surface fleet doctrine. Oh, whoops. Uh, new technologies in the air and beneath the sea are fascinating, but in the end of the day, control of the waters is determined by the surface of fleet. And transmit without a competent one for far too long. We shall build a new armada capable of dominating with the waves, bringing to heal those Germans, Japanese, and the others who dared menace Asia. Forward thinking and officers' corps. The future of any successful military now is not as generals nor soldiers, but rather concepts and theories. I drive progress within their own doctrine. Well, the turn of the KMT in this NRA success in the Northern Expedition, some officers who stayed overseas in training have now returned with fresh, bold, and radical ideas on how to modernize the NRA. Which is a good thing now that we're probably going to collapse with Moscow having fallen. Uh, which is good too, so. Don't get me wrong. Very good. It starts in this capital. Oh, I guess it hasn't fallen either, huh? Then again, we're taking so much. So we're going to do this off screen and. Oh, oh there it goes. It starts in. I'll see what we can take from Russia. Probably not very much. And then we'll see what our next goal is. Well, we're almost ready to go to war with Japan, the co prosperity sphere in general, but we've gone to war with Afghanistan because. reasons. Um, we're running out of war support and stability, even though we're really high, because I just decided, you know what, screw it, we're just going to annex all of Russia. Even though Russia's back under the German boot, but you know, whatever, it is what it is. I mean, we're doing the Grand Chinese Fleet. 
Actually, they've got a little bit of manpower they do. Um, it's not enough for us to be satisfied with petty gunboats and outdated cruisers. A real fleet requires capital ships, those capable of shredding apart enemy escorts and bombarding enemy fortifications. If we are serious about our naval ambitions, we must be willing to invest in the pri pricey grand vessels worthy of great powers. We are living in the dawn of the new age in the Pacific, and we may be at the center. Commission the six-year program. Would you look at that? Not bad. The dreams of the revolutionaries often outstrip the government's actual ability to realize them, nonetheless. When the party stated its goal of developing a capacity of 600,000 tons in six years, the Navy has gone full steam ahead with its plans. Working tirelessly day and night, hundreds of ships are planned, though admittedly few are above 500 tons. We're witnessing the birth of the new Chinese fleet. So I'm not super worried about Afghanistan. Um, and then after that, prepare the coastal garrison plan. China's long coastline is a major vulnerability in the event of foreign invasion, as prior wars have demonstrated. Although the land-based defenses in the army are in the army's domain, the fleet also has a responsibility to keep off invaders of our shores and harry those foolish enough to try. With adequate early warning systems and crafty tactics, we can strike our foes at the weakest by the coast. New Navy, new traditions. Naval tradition is important in life, but there are a few places where it is of such significance as board the fleet. Even as China's naval capacity shrinks, the fleet remains divided into various competing regional cliques. Or cliques. With a steady hand, we shall fuse them into one Chinese fleet, infused with the enlightenment of the three principles, and combining the lessons learned across the nation. This is how we shall win. What do we got here? Uh, a couple more... Yeah, yeah. Motorized, very nice, very nice, as you can see. We've got a, a couple things getting ready to invade Taiwan. Hopefully we can do so. Of course, we don't have a lot of... Uh, well, we're running out of... Hmm. We have a lot of attrition here. It's not ideal. Uh, but it is 1947. Can't believe I'm playing until 1947. But it's alright. Here, do that one, because you can. What else we got here? Sure. Why not? And then there goes Afghanistan. Thank you for playing Afghanistan. Goodbye. Who needed political power for all, uh, anything here? I don't know. I just like I just like eating them. And after a long fight with the Afghans, we've launched a full offensive and forced the Afghan army to surrender and flee to the mountains. Kabul and the major roads are now in our hands, but the countryside rallying gets us, and we make a large fight on our hands should we attempt to occupy the so-called graveyard of empires. Oh, that's nice. So we're lowering our stability slowly, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, so you guys are looking good. You guys are doing fine over here. Um, but yeah, I do want to beat up the Copra Spirit here next. The Rikes Pack's looking okay. Do you know Adria Boon came back? You know, they're doing all right. Uh, Third International's still trying to fight with Entente. But uh, yeah. Not bad. Oh, Mexico's divided into two, which is kind of weird. So, German Empire. Literally just a German Empire. And then there's Mexico. Go figure. So you guys are just kind of like... Hmm. Well, I guess we really wanted to just over there. That's fine. See what happens. So let's see what happens. We'll go to war. Can we actually go to war with them? No, we can't. We can go to war with the German Empire. That's pretty much it. Hmm. So commission the ships, and then uh, we have to do what? Oh, I guess we lost that war goal against Japan, which I don't understand why it would uh, expire, but. It's all right. We'll get we'll get about one political power in a day. Well, yeah, we'll change that and improved anti tank is nice. Go ahead and do that. Thank you very much. And then after that, uh, purchase foreign blueprints. Well, China certainly has the resources and capabilities to launch its own aerial development scheme. Our technological progress in flight was still lags years behind modern European designs. Years of exile in Europe have allowed us to test and examine European plane designs from the British Republican Air Force and the Commandant Air Force. Let us purchase foreign blueprints and designs to create our own modern planes. Encourage the doctrine of initiative. The concept of initiative as a means of offense is one that is employed by the National Revolutionary Army, but it's also a concept that will certainly apply to our own aerial program. By encouraging our pilots to follow the European concepts of, to follow the European concepts of aerial initiative, we will have our fighters and bombers focus on more offensive capabilities rather than defensive ones. Uh, flying Tigers. While our planes may be certainly be inspired by European designs and help from the air came in forms of European volunteers, our efforts to create a native and solely Chinese air force is growing steadily, and with it more and more pilots are claiming successes in the air by day and by day, day by day. Furthermore, we'll be also following our revolutionary sisters as they join us in the air to grow our air force. Not bad. Encourage attack aviation. As shown in modern conflicts around the world, and especially the world's major powers, the future of the aviation lies in combined efforts with ground troops to launch decisive breakthroughs with an unprecedented, unprecedented level of firepower. Our flying students in Europe have witnessed attack bombers using, being used in European conflicts and are eager to share their knowledge with us. The XPO Project. Based on the French fighter, the Ulloir L-46 and the XPO, developed by the officer Chu Chia Jen, is China's first attempt at a native fire prototype. Album with four 20mm Hispano Suiza underwing cannons and capable of carrying small bombs as well. Our goal for the XPO is to reduce our dependency on foreign uh, purchased aircraft and instead foster pride and in procedure in our own native aviation studies. Nice. 
Anything? Oh, this one. Very good. And you know what? You're here. You can do that one too, but go do that one as well. That would be nice. And advanced missiles. We don't need that one next. We're going to come over here and do this. And uh, anything else here that we really care about? Signals, I guess. Better advanced signal companies, because we can. Hey, find some positive political power. Why does this one pop up again? We already did this once. We have all these, and these ones don't really matter too much, so. Liberation of Asia. Oh, look at all that stuff. Yeah, we only need 35. We don't need to do that one. These ones are not bad. We don't have to do them. Local agent recruitment, prospect for resources wouldn't be bad either, but, you know, it is what it is. Encourage development, part of the doctrine of initiative. It would be nice to do too. Lose some stability though, but you don't really have to get all these. Yeah. Anti tank upgrade. Eh, we can delay what we're doing here. Um, just because I do want to seize what we need. So um, We have a decently sized submarine group here, but. Alright, so we're going to go and do this. We're going to seize Siamese concessions. Give us 30 days, and then we're going to come back over here and do this one. Death from the depths, beneath the surface in the darkest depths. A intrepid man and deadly vessel, Slurk. Submarine warfare was in its infancy during the previous war, but has since become an equalizer between the haughty fleets of the status quo and states that they oppress. We should make full use of these technologies to raid enemy supply convoys, supply their invasion forces, and also pick off any vulnerable sh uh, capital ships. Coastal ship uh, stratagems. It's not enough to simply know where our foes will be arriving, we must develop an arm of the light ships, uh, capable of disrupting enemy attacks using speed, ingenuity, and above all, daring to strike. These coastal defense ships must be cheap and designed for China's coast, laying various traps and coordinating with the ground to gain an advantage over our foes more expensive vessels. Likewise, they must be able to protect their own shipping as well. Anything else over here? Aviation stuff? Sure. Republic of Siam. Si uh, oh, look at that. Bandits of concessions. Odd by combined mind unwavering resolve, the foreigners have all but abandoned their concessions, leaving them right for the return to China. Already a force of poison seize them, raid the, raise the Chinese flag high up above their streets. Another glorious step on the road to ending our century of national humiliation. Wan Sui. Fantastic. See, I knew that. I knew that. Oh, wow. That's nice. Look at that. Ah. Present the air is good, and get even better anti-air after that too. And it gives us time to build even more stuff up too. Um, we see the Portuguese concessions. Um, so after that, honestly, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Portugal, Bengal. We'll go to do with Bengal next. So the goal would be to get all Southeast Asia and then strike into uh, Japan proper. That really is the goal here. And we already have set up quite a few planes around here as well. Um, got a couple guys there. Oh. Eastern Hispaniola. Well, good job, guys. Do what you can. A thousand more casts, huh? There we go. A thousand, thousand, thousand. There we go. And what do we got here? Bengal. Up next, our trains. Sure, why not? Good, 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 Reno. And uh, blockade runners. It's unfortunate we reality we face a reality we face that for all of our efforts we'll only be at best be able to protect areas in the immediate vicinity of our coastline. Outside of our fortified harbors and far away from even our strike planes, it's likely that our foes oh god dang it. <clears throat> uh will attempt to cut off major shipments using the naval superiority. We must develop strategies and craft skip both evading enemy patrols and bring the blockade. Defense that sounds pretty nice. Not going to lie. Well, you usually don't want to lie, but you never know. You think better. You think anything here? Anything here in the war? Uh, we're pretty good. We're fine with all this stuff. All right. Good, good, 
good. And what are we building up? More nuclear reactors? Sure. We are a nuclear China. Love it. Actually, we should probably build an airbase up here too. There you go. Alright, so there you go. They're going to attack us immediately. And I'm okay with that. Two cents in the sky. Uh, if you want to do this, please go right ahead. Uh, or maybe I haven't read it yet, but look at this. Oh, yeah, we don't know how to There's perhaps no greater barbaric imperialist nation than Japan, or people have suffered nothing short of flagrant injustice. At the hands of the Japanese, who have always tried to take advantage of China's civilization. Many of our countrymen still remember the devastation, the cause, and the war of resistance now. Whether their nation revives, it's time to prevent them from taking advantage of us again. Oh, God, what is this? Oh, we're trying to bomb them. It's kind of nice, actually. Oh, War of the Caribbean, too, huh? Can you do anything here? Mm, yeah. We got a lot of mechanisms there. Well, we started our assaults. That's nice. Yeah, Third International? Yeah, we don't want to fight you. I don't know why we would, but, you know, whatever. go, there you go. Alright. So they want to attack us as well, which is fine. Blast 15,000 already. What else we got here? Uh, we'll do this one next. Ground support's good to do as well. Can you switch to being aggressive? Ooh. Oh, hello. We have destroyers here? Oh, well, they died then. Okay, whatever. Why are we losing all these subs? Oh my god. Holy crap, that's a lot of subs lost. Well, we're going back to uh, doing this one then. Oh, hello. Um, can you, like, not lose? That'd be great. Where are you guys at? And you know what? You're gonna come over here. Fat Navy. I don't know what to expect from Japan, you know. Good, good, good. And, uh, come on. There you go. Well, Encircle is always pretty nice to have. There you go. Very nice. Dude, just go and repair whenever you need. It's fine with me. What's this? So, a lot of losses so far. Public Siam's gonna really wear themselves out. Um, yeah, we're just kind of hanging out here. Still like attacking a lot. Which is fine with us, like I said. Uh, the whole naval issue is going to be kind of a problem, though. We continue making some more planes and whatnot, but... navally wise Ooh! Well, I finally got all those scores done, huh? Cool? Cool, very good. 
Just let them wear themselves out. We do have a nuke too, so let's see. So I yeah, am. What do you got here? Two million on service bar requirement. They've got one million. God, why do these Southeast Asian countries have so many people here? Japan's got quite a bit. Half a mi million. I encourage attack aviation, which is good. Go and do some of that. That's fine. And what else going to do? Create the ninth column. In a joint effort with the ROCAF and the NRA, an experimental division has been created by the most excellent fit of our soldiers to serve an elite unit. This brave unit is inspired by our contemporary usage of paratroopers. Allowing such units to deploy in a combat zone to the Atlantic Passage. With such attacks radical and with new casualties to be expected, fortune favors a bold. Master air land integration. Uh, the combination of aerial power and mechanized warfare combines the firepower of tactical and close air support bombers with mobile troops. While well, the words of the warlord air will follow its rivals in artillery, future modern warfare relies on the army's usage of mobile artillery units in the form of direct air support to launch devastating offenses into the heart of the enemy. Patrol the coasts. Well, China's vast expanses connect us with the rest of Europe, where most industrial regions and sources of trade lie with the bountiful co China's coastline. In times of war, <clears throat> an enemy with a stronger naval presence will certainly make an attempt to seize or blockade our naval's vital sea lanes. In order to fight back, We'll encourage those the use of the naval bombers to patrol and sink all who try. Why not? Here you see. That's fine. Nice, nice. They're empty air. Hey! We actually killed off another oh, enemy subs. Uh, what are we missing here? Spiders, you yeah. know. Convoys, that sucks. So the goal is to take out Southeast Asia first and then continue moving into the mainland. So, uh, overall, not bad. Not great so far. I mean, it's about what you expect, really. So that's all done. That's nice. Uh, let's move here. And National Regeneration, which I think I read before, so. Alright, oh, anyways, we are all children of China. We all know that China for thousands of years is the world's premier power. Our civilization culture is ahead of the world, and at last time it's supposed to reclaim our national identity from years of imperial stimulation. Arise, sacrifice all notion of wealth, security, and individuality for the dedication and salvation of a glorious nation. Uh, liberation from the skies. Often in the clouds we fly up with determination to determine our motherland, or to defend our motherland. From the Kulun Mountains to the shores of the Pacific Ocean, we fly over ranges, rivers, and majestic mountains, determined to liberate the Chinese proletariat from the skies. And courageous and diligent, we strive to secure the prosperity of our civilization forever with our Air Force. Yeah. Although I saw red here. It's not ideal. I don't want to see red. So once they start naval invading too, we'll be okay as well. Yeah, they're definitely trying again. Uh, still putting up more roads, which is fine. Looks like we still need more supply through here, which kind of sucks. There you go. Take three. Uh, you know, take that one too. And what else we got here? Uh, we got that one. Blockade runners. It's unfortunate reality we face. Uh, I think it was earlier, didn't I? No. It's all in maritime peace. It's not bad. Torpedo to hit chance. Lock, look towards the three C's. That's not bad. But I like this one. Uh, we're going to bring prosperity back to our nation. We must work to calm the seas and bring back harmony to the waters. This means creating a force capable of protecting our trade from foreign thieves, defending the nation's commerce in our waters. We should reinforce our Navy and Coast Guard's defensive capabilities, making them adept at shielding our precious cargo in the event of war. A nation salvation. During the first class of Wampoa, there was no other candidate that stood out than the brilliant He Zeng Han. A revolutionary and proud nationalist, he had... Uh, it's seen Germany's role in China's humiliation and vowed that never again. Never again should the Chinese people suffer under the weight of imperialism. It was He Zong Han who was one of the first to organize the China Revival Society from a fringe movement to discipline an orderly organization under him. The Revolutionary Army Comrades Association was created for soldiers of the Wampol Military Academy to grow together, to work together, to fight together, and to share the burdens of the National Revolution. Uh, but it was also He's own writings that European totalism imbued the spirit of Dr. Sun's revolution and only through such totalitarian means could the country be saved. To say that he's Ang Han, advocates for an authoritarian state is an understatement, as he advocates for a completely unabashedly totalitarian state. As executive secretary of the Ling Jing Shi, he has passed numerous laws that forbid any seditious activity from journalists and that all newspapers must be censored and run through the state. Only under such control can the masses learn. They can learn that our means of revolution is correct. Furthermore, all information that goes through to the journalismo must pass through he first, leading to a resentment among some members of the CRS who wonder who is really in charge. Our country is one of the dreamers. <clears throat> And he's dreams of China slowly but quickly becoming reality. The executive secretary yearns for a day when tutelage does not need to be practiced and when the people themselves can control the masses. Whether new cultural patterns taught to them by the Iraq on the CRS, they 
we would be able to control a descending minorities and to practice uh, uh, Min Kwan, truly working towards the social and national revolution. The dreams do come true. And it's interesting to see that they are out of manpower. We have almost, more than tripled their factory count. They still have a lot of fuel. And the army is still 122 divisions. The navy is still quite large, but they are down to four carriers finally. And we've been bombing them like crazy here. Now they're going to send out their more navy more as they're decimating our navy, but that's alright. That's how we got some cheap subs here. And you know what? We're going to continue making some cheap subs here. Because you know what we got in China? We got the manpower. Well, we got some manpower. We've lost quite a bit. We're still mobilizing more, but you know what? With them up in the north, oh, we just killed off like almost, almost 40 convoys. Uh, we're doing alright. So. But our stability, don't look at that, please. Uh, political power, we didn't believe in political power anyways. So. But Southeast Asia, looking pretty good so far. Uh, let's take a look see. So we've lost about, what, half a million? Oh, 1.32 million. A million against Japan, probably because of the naval stuff. But we've cut off quite a few of the Japanese themselves, so. That's our aircraft, pretty good. We also got modern fighters and uh, naval stuff and whatnot, so. We're slowly, like, basically turning the tide. And we do have eight nukes, as you can see at the top of the screen. We've killed off, uh... A lot of Vietnamese, but you know, whatever. Subs, subs, convoys, good stuff like that. Really, the main goal is to take out uh, Japan proper. And we did technically get Korea capitulated, which wasn't good for us, but you know, whatever. And they are also up here too, which kind of sucks for everybody and everything involved. Um, so we're going to cut down on this t as well for now. Marine divisions. Eh, I mean, we do have the Army XP for it, I guess. There you go. And then mobile combat, or just combat in general. There you go, artillery, artillery. Uh, anti tank and anti air is fine. Screw it, we're going to do that type of division. I don't know. Signals, engineers. Uh, we already have anti tank on these guys, support rockets, and recon would probably be pretty nice for these guys. There you go. I wanted you guys to invade technically as well, but whatever. Let's see what we, what happens. Uh, let's go with four divisions, maybe. Go Marines. That's fine. Because we got more enough equipment for all that stuff. And, uh... Air? Sure. Oh, can you only choose one? 60. Huh. It's alright, whatever. For now. Nice. We're slowly getting there. Look at all this. There's not much. We're slowly getting through those ships. Oops, seven destroyers now. Nice, nice. Destroyers, convoys, convoy. Six destroyers. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Next up, and we're going to grab uh, armor. What else are we going to do next? Some more stuff over here. Why not? Bay of the Shan States, well... National Reconstruction Commission. Develop Hunan's industrial capacity. Hunan remains one of the most agrarian and rural provinces in all of southern China. The national government hopes to rectify this by establishing industrial bases such as the Central Machinery Factory with the help of the Ministry of Interior. This factory helps, uh, hopes to produce some machinery and some gadgets of the modern world such as automobiles, steam turbines, and telephones. Yes, please. Completely blockade them now. Nothing goes in or out. That includes fuel. Tons and tons of fuel. They can't do anything there. Uh oh. Looks like we're really starting to rack up a lot of casualties for them. It's fantastic, which means these guys are going to starve more. Yay! Oh, we destroyed two black cruisers and a destroyer. And improved cruiser hulls. Nice. Oh my god, look at all those convoys. For all the losses we've incurred. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Convoys, convoys, convoys. They stopped putting stuff through here, which is fine. Because I don't want you to get us ready. Well, you know what? Where are we at? So you guys are up there, that's fine. Uh, I want you guys to come back down here. Because they're going to start sending more guys that way. It's really you guys are going to do this. No, actually. There you go. So from here, and bid right there. Mm 
You know what we're just gonna do is make it like this. How many days will that take? 26 is still a bit much. Um, to there. To there. To there. It's gonna take time to leave anyway, so. That's fine. Let them let come back in there. That's fine. Let's see what we'll do with those guys. In the meantime, we're gonna get these guys down even further. 23 million, 85 divisions max. You guys have what? 132 ships left. A lot of capital ships still, unfortunately. Oh, and that's doing okay there. Not good for us. We'll do that too. Why not? It looks like they stopped importing things to the mainland, at least. That being said, basic government cars. Sure. There you go. Have fun with that. Advanced light ship, nice, very good. And we're gonna need 126 screens. Very few capital ships, but that's all right. Fine. Are we good to go? Let's see if we can go. Can we enable invade? It's a real question. Deploying land. They do have a naval base here too. So. Come on, get the god dang port. Ah, look at that. We got a port. Fate of Sean states, Sean Hills has long been a thorn on the side of those who fought to control them. As armies marched through the towns and cities, it's clear that the Sean areas have at least been subjugated fully. What should we do be done with these newly acquired territories? We'll do that one. Marines 2. Very nice. Marines 3. And there you go. And actually, we're going to come over here next and grab capital ship armor. Well, I guess it doesn't make sense for this one. For CRS. We don't really have a CRS here, but that's alright. We don't really care. And goodbye. There you go. Very nice. We actually did that. That's actually really cool. So now, can we do this? Not sure why I take all the way around, but whatever. We're going to need more ports here, aren't we? Should have all these divisions here. Oof. There. Go ahead. Hey, eleven destroyers are gone. Nice. So even if you lose a naval base, it's fine. I'll come back and try to take it. Improve the infrastructure of Han River. Extending over 400 kilometers, the Han River in Guangdong is the second largest river in Guangdong. <clears throat> I'll give us a second here. Uh, just a little smaller than the Pro River. Nonetheless, the river is known for its frequent flooding, and many of its current infrastructure are either hopelessly outdated or damaged after years of war. The national government has decided to undertake a project to increase employment in Guangdong and facilitate greater control of waters through an ambitious dam project. Absolutely. They saw the name. Oh, we destroyed a heavy cruiser. Nice. Convoys, convoys, convoys. Nice. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Yes. Good. Oh, hello. India's down there, too. Look at that. Or maybe that's Australasia. It's probably Australasia. Oh, well. It's not bad. We could do that one. Look, goodbye. You good to go? Actually, since we're here, I have an idea. Six jet engines, huh? It's not enough. Uh, armor plates. Flying boat. Service detection. Actually, large fuel tanks. There you go. 
Uh, speed weapons, bombs back. Yo, you can do both, maybe? Huh. Regun equipment? Probably not. Oh, we're gonna need some more aluminum, aren't we? We need a lot of aluminum. Oh boy. There you go. It's fine. Paratroopers. I mean, we don't even need paratroopers. I got rid of them anyway. Supply organization. Supply grass is really good though. And this is uh, special forces attack. Yeah. I'm just thinking here. Um. Hmm. Do we have any large airframe planes yet? It takes a while to make those planes, but still. Hmm. We have one. All we need is one. Oh, would you look at that? It's a plane. It'd be a real shame if something happened to Japan here. Ah, the poor Japanese poor all miles. Oh, look how much we just landed all at the same time. That's just fantastic. You guys can watch it too. Nagasaki's ours. I guess Nagasaki's going to be spared this time. But the other Japanese all miles aren't going to get so lucky, are they? I just look at that one gun first. Thank you very much. All right, cool. So you guys are gonna be here, and then you guys are gonna be here, and you guys are also gonna be here and do that. Let this army deal with them. It's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello, senor. Oh, there must not be any. Uh, yeah, I mean, naval fleet. It's fine. It's fine. Just go in, guys. You'll be more than fine. Should be aggressive now. High risk, high risk, high risk. Uh, I'd recommend going in if they're completely leaving that area. That'd be great. Nice. I need one of you guys. And there you go. So I can go in there, that's fine. That's kind of sad, honestly. It's very sad. You guys better do this, though, and boom. Uh, hello? Oh, we have uh, Shroom Bombardment helping us out, eh? And you're just gonna circle them, then. There you go. Let them all die there. And. Oop, oop, oop. Kill them all off. Uh, sure. Yeah, not bad so far. So we still have red air, unfortunately, because our guys are not even here for some reason. Odd. But alright. That wouldn't it? Let's 
Are our planes doing anything? It looks like they're really doing nothing. You come over here. They're doing damage to us, but we've no, none of our planes over here. Makes no sense. That's case I'm unhappy over here. Um, yeah, good coachy. It's fine. Good. And they're out of manpower anyway, so what do we do? Oh, they're not quite out of manpower, but they're close. 46 divisions left, 79 ships. Oh, it's like I'm going to carry at some point, huh? Nice. Very, very good, yeah. Let it happen. Death from depths. Shell dies. Very good. Hello? What are you doing? Can you... Why can't you do anything? I don't understand. Like, how do we not have naval supremacy here at this point? This literally makes no sense to me. And... Come on, get in there. There you go, finally. Thank God. Beat the crap out of them. This way too. Go there. This is annoying. This is stupid. Well, Tokyo at least. You know what? For being stupid, they're gonna get nuked anyways. Screw it. We might actually accidentally nuke our own guys. Nuke all this stuff. Beep. Oh, I can't drop nuke on that. Darn it. Hey, I can drop on that airbase. Why not? I don't know. There's three, almost four million people here, so we're gonna hit somebody here. This is for the beginning of the game, for being a piece of the garbage. Oh, go! Ah, and of course we do that. Of course. Yep, take that. The miniature navy. Boop, boop, boop. Don't know what, really want to do come. But I think we're going to end it there. We've done really well. We've done it. We've done basically what we needed to do, and we've done very well. A liberal Southeast Asia, the non high has been long been in the China sphere of cultural, social, and economic, and political influence since the days of the Great Ming. There have been long fellow comrades and imperialists alike in Southeast Asia, as well as our own expatriate countrymen who have yearned and supported our cause for liberation. Now we're finally in position to repay them, use China's strength to unite us in solidarity. Secure the Southern Seas. The South China Sea and beyond long been under Chinese maritime control and was under China's influence that these regions became thriving, prosperous nations. As long as the reactionary state, other Australasian Confederation exists and there can be no peace and the resources of these seas cannot be shared with China and her allies, we must take the initiative and secure the seas ourselves. Ensure security in the Pacific. Some of our government come from the Hawaii themselves, as are the KMT, both of remarkable presence within the island's Chinese community. They too have witnessed. The barbarity of imperialism firsthand as Hawaii was, was forcefully annexed by the United States of America. China must ensure that the Pacific is free from imperialist machinations of the Americans, Japanese, and all others who seek to control it and become the guardian of the Great Sea. And imperialism crushed forevermore. Regions considered most vital Chinese strategic interests are under friendlier allied satellite government. Oh, wow. So you get a crap ton of political power, stability, attack, and defense, and just for World times. It's finally been done with the country's natural glory and strength, and we've finally successfully driven off every last holdout of foreign imperialism in Asia and the Pacific. The Asian peoples can finally live in harmony and unity. Peace and cooperation now without the intervention of the Western Japanese. No longer will never again shall foreign imperialism threaten the Chinese people. So I, I don't know if we're going to do that one. I think I might just end it here because this has been a long, 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 long campaign. I've done really well. It's really Red Asia. You know, except for down here and over here. But for the most part, I think we did really well. And I'm, I just want to end, end camp in there because we're looking nice and fat. And I don't want to nuke our own guys. But hey, if you enjoyed the campaign, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous Republic of China rest of your day.